Hello and welcome to our series on vegetable production with Sakata, where we talk everything vegetable production from seedling right through till harvest, soil preparation, fertigation, a lot of it. Lolo, how are you doing? Good on yourself, Andre. No, good, good. So today we are talking irrigation, specifically the different types of irrigation that you get. In front of me, we've got drip lines. Okay, so first of all, explain to me when will I use drip lines on my vegetables? Okay, uh, very good question. So, as you know, you've got your drip lines, you've also got your overhead irrigations, which would be like your micro jets yes. or your sprinklers. So, where you want to use your drip lines, one, if you do not have access to a lot of water, yeah, because they do save a lot of water. Secondly, if you've got sensitive crops, such like your tomatoes, your sweet peppers that get sick very quickly when their leaves are wet, you yeah. want to use a drip line instead of overhead irrigation. So, they, so they're very sensitive for um, excess moisture on the leaves and all of those things. So you want to keep the leaves dry and you want to give the water directly at the roots where they need it. That's correct. So the longer the leaves are wet, the more likely they are to get sick. So if you can keep it dry for a longer period, you are decreasing the occurrence of any disease. Okay, so, and then in terms of when we look at drip irrigation, okay, obviously there's, uh, uh, um, you've got your different, um, the, the holes where the water comes out, which is basically called uh, the dripper, and these things are spaced um, a certain um, distance between each other and different irrigation, different drips have got different spacings and also the different drips give us uh, more or less water per hour at the end of the day. How do I determine which drip is the best for me to go with? Okay, uh, firstly with the output of the drip I always suggest that you go to your supplier yeah. uh, or, or an irrigation specialist. They would give you the best um, answers with the output. But with the terms of the spacing, uh, I prefer the 30 centimeter drips. Uh, what that allows you to do, for instance, if you're planting now, for instance, in this case, cauliflower, you can put it 60 centimeters apart. You would just skip one drip and uh, plant in the, in the 60 yes. centimeter one. And then if you go back and plant something like uh, sweet pepper tomatoes, then you can go back and go uh, use the 30 centimeter spacing instead of having to now go buy 30 centimeter spacing for oh, your tomatoes, with you. 60 centimeter for your cauliflower and so forth. So I prefer the 30 centimeter one. If you want to put in watermelons, you put it 90 centimeters apart. And it doesn't matter because in between they're still getting water uh -huh. and you're actually getting that root development towards the water then as well. That is very much correct. At the, at the end of the day. Yes. And in terms of um, water deliverance, the amount of water that I want to put down in a certain time, um, what would be the factors um, that would influence that? Uh, so firstly the type of soil that you have yes. and then also the type of climate if it's overcast you would normally need less water because there'd be less evaporation so if i'm in a cooler area those types of things Th that's correct versus if i'm there in the desert there where there's <laughs> nothing exactly <laughs> exactly so that's what's going to influence uh, uh, how much you would need to apply Okay, and then let's look at micro irrigation. So, which, um, if I can put the setup, it's basically the same as this. We've got the pipes instead of the drips. You've just got these things sticking up, and they're giving the water at the end of the day, uh, basically wetting these the, the the whole bed. Yes. When would I use those? Or uh, in the, the the broader vegetable community, they're not that popular. Uh, they are popular with certain uh, vegetables, especially the ones that we plant closer to one another. Yeah. For like your carrots, uh, even your spinach and your beetroot, you can use the micro -jets. So root crops are more leaning towards that. That's correct. And and because of that, you, you cover up, uh, you, you water more evenly. Yes. And because they're so close to one another with the drips, there's that space of the 30 centimeters. So it would not be ideal for things like carrots. Uh, I'm with you. Yes. So then you need you need the whole bed basically uh, um, to to have water. To have water. Okay. Great. And then we've got a third one, which is basically full area coverage. Um, let's go and walk over to that side, and we can show um, them how it looks there. Definitely. So in terms of then uh, the third option, we've got basically your full area coverage, like uh, we've got behind us. In which instance would I um, go that route uh, to make sure that I get the proper irrigation? Um, so with this type of irrigation, it's more common with the root crops. Uh, so your like your onions, your beetroot, your carrots, uh, as well as your spinach. Um, yep. You can use this type of irrigation. Some as well for the cabbage. But is that also because they've got a more, um, uh, so I can call it maybe an extensive root system where the root system needs more space to develop to get a proper plant? Yes, that and because we plant them so close. Like you can imagine carrots, how close we yep. plant them. Uh, so this type of irrigation is ideal for that. 
Okay, I'm with you. So, but what is the dis disadvantages of doing a, a full coverage irrigation? Uh, one, you definitely use more water. Yeah. Two, you can imagine you're also watering the weeds. Yep. Yeah, which is uh, not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, then, and, and, and your, with your uh, herbicides being a very limited on the vegetable side that you can actually use, I can see that being a problem in terms of labor, keeping them clean and e so forth. E exactly. Um, one, you know, with your herbicides, Two, uh, with the other crops like your tomatoes and sweet peppers like we were mentioning earlier on, this will not be ideal for them because their leaves will be wet for longer periods of time, which in turn would then result in uh, disease development. And in terms of deliverance, again, the amount of water that I put down in a certain time, um, where would I get that information? Your irrigation specialist. Uh, people tend to overlook specialists and I think it's very, very important to get a specialist, whether it be fertilizer, whether it be chemicals or irrigation, it's always the best choice to go for a uh, specialist to give you that advice. And then obviously the seed. The seed you come to us. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that is our vegetable uh, production series with Sakata, um, specifically around irrigation, the specific types of irrigation. If you need more information, click the link on top or below, depending on where you're watching this. Comment if you've got any questions and someone from Sakata will come back to you uh, with those answers and make sure that you get all our other videos in terms of irrigation, soil preparation, fertilization seeding there's a lot of them still coming so make sure you don't miss any one of them till next time cheers